earlier this year, I'm driving my two children to school, and um, my older son is making the question that I was afraid of always. Dad, what do you do for a job? I say, okay, uh, I'm thinking and writing on open government. Silence. Until we arrived at school, nothing else was said. So I promised myself, next time he asks me what I do for a job, I will say I'm unemployed. <laughs> but actually, I'm not unemployed, although I come from Greece. Uh, one of the things that I do is I teach in the School of the Public Administration, and I have students that want to learn about open government. So when I enter in the classroom, I ask them, what do you think that open government is? And this is the answer that I get, open data, project and transparency, access to public information, more e-government e systems, and services. And although it's this guy that framed the, 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 framed the term open government in a similar way, I think the term itself is much more complex. It misses many things that we don't say. Let's try to, to think, how do people actually open government? Well, they can ask direct democracy. They can ask for more participation. They can even try to implement direct democracy. They can use violence, and they can be very violent, and they, can, they want to make government collapse many times. Also, they can be heroes, because they have the courage to reveal public information and to assume the responsibility of it. But honestly, how many of you here, and of us here, would be in the, in the place of Snowden these days? So, people have the ways to open government. Our story starts in 2010, when the Greek Prime Minister at that moment says that everything should be on the internet, everything in the light. He meant that every public decision around public administration should be put on the internet. And it's our team that was mandated to do this task and to create a platform that was online one month after, where servants of public administration would put all this information on expenditure, on management, on transactions, on everything on the internet in order to be valid. So no validity if this was not on the internet. Four years later, we have 7,000 7, users, unique users, unique public servants that are every day online on this platform. They upload 15,000 decisions about public administration. And overall, there are more than 3 million decisions there as open data. And this is very important, the open data part. In the meantime, we had to train and lobby a lot. Because if you tell me of another way of convincing ministers and public servants that the information is not theirs, but it's now to share with others, then I would congratulate you. But us, we had to train, train, lobby, lobby all the time. There was no other way. And we had to break the silos that exist everywhere around us, especially in the public administration. And we, have draft, we had to draft laws because laws what, what made the transparency platform valid, and action plans, and we had to empower people to build the new communities. At the end, or in the meantime, or parallelly, we understood that, in fact, we are changing the culture of people. And we're not just building technology or a machine that was on the internet. We are really changing the way people thought. And how I understood that? Because some time ago, we came across this thing. And this is what people call, the people that do it, they call it the transparency engine. And actually, it's a mechanism on publicspending.net where you can connect every single euro spent from the public administration to the company that received it. And not only you can connect it online and in real time, but also you can have the history of such kind of transactions. And this is what people call transparency engine. And this was possible because there was open data in the first place for them to work with. A second event that was very, was very, very interesting was that in October 2013, 
The Minister of Interior said that I will make a new law on transparency and I will make it even stronger. Only he gave only one day for discussion to civil society. Well, people were not happy at all. They reacted, they sent letters to the parliament, they went to see other politicians, they said this is not possible, we cannot discuss about a matter like that that is very close to us for only one day. They got 15 days and they got to co-draft the final law. And yes, it was a law that made transparency even stronger. But this is only the beginning. Now we can imagine, in a more clear way, seeing the transparency engine, how this could be applied to other domains. Think budgeting, either local, either national. Think financial transactions. Why we cannot have a better view, a better understanding of how the financial transactions take place right now? Also think accounting policies of national and multinational companies. Why should we be deprived of data of this kind? And a very, something that I very much enjoy to speak about is about labor conditions. How can use transparency engines to understand better how people work, to give them better rights, to make them capable of protecting themselves? So, even if governments never really open, this, this doesn't mean to stop us from trying. Never, for everywhere. <laughs>